67-year-old Mia was transferred from an outside hospital with temporary right hemiparesis and 60% stenosis on the left ICA. CTA showed the subacute left frontal ischemia, occluded left vertebral artery, and calcified basilar artery. The left common carotid artery is disease-free from the clavicle, uh, almost up to the uh, carotid bifurcation. Both 3D rendered and segmented images of the carotid bifurcation indicated a short ICA lesion just above the hyoid bone. To perform a TCAR, the puncture site has to be disease-free. The diameter of the common carotid artery has to be greater or equal to 6 mm. The distance between the clavicle and the proximal end of the lesion or the bifurcation, whichever is closer, has to be at least 5 cm. And the ICA diameter has to be between 4 and 9 mm. In our case, the disease started before the carotid bifurcation so we had to measure its distance to the clavicle. Based on case planning, the patient and the lesion were suitable to perform TCAR. The left side of the neck and the right groin were prepped and the patient was draped sterilely. Under ultrasound guidance, we identified and marked the left carotid bifurcation and the left common carotid artery just above the clavicle. We proceeded to expose the left common carotid artery. Transverse incision was made between the sternal and clavicular heads of the sternocleidomastoid muscle below the omohyoid. Three centimeter of the common carotid artery was isolated and an umbilical tape was placed around the proximal one third of the common carotid artery. Then we pre-placed placed a U-stitch with a 5-0 polypropylene suture to facilitate hemostasis upon arterial sheet removal. Then we moved to the left groin and accessed the left common femoral vein with a micropuncture kit under ultrasound guidance. The guide wire is introduced through the micropuncture needle. The needle is removed and a small incision is made uh, on the skin and the micropuncture sheet is placed. Then the sheet is removed and over an O35 uh, wire the 8 French venous return sheet is placed. After the blood is aspirated uh, it's flushed with heparin saline. The exposed common carotid artery is accessed with a micropuncture needle. The vessel is slightly elevated with the umbilical tape to avoid back wall penetration. An O18 guide wire is introduced and we place a micropuncture sheet in the artery. Then the image intensifier is brought in the field. Angiogram was obtained to visualize the bifurcation and the lesion uh, at the origin of the internal carotid artery. The guide wire is exchanged for a J-tipped stiff wire. Uh, it is important not to reach the lesion with its distal end. Alternatively, it can be parked in the external carotid artery while the arterial sheet is introduced. There was no need for this step. The micro sheet was exchanged for the transcarotid arterial sheet and the J wire was removed. The flow controller is connected to the arterial sheet and after de-airing the system, the venous sheet is connected. To ensure reverse flow, we tightened the umbilical tape on the common carotid artery proxima to the arterial sheet. The lesion was crossed with an O14 guide wire and we performed primary stenting with a 10 by 40 mm on road transcarotid stent. Post dilatation was performed with a 6 by 20 mm balloon. The proximal end of the stent reaches into the common carotid artery. We had to cover this portion since the lesion extended here. 
completion angiogram showed a good morphological result. The arterial sheet was removed and the preclosure suture was tied. The umbilical tape around the left common carotid artery is useful in the uh, mobilization of the vessel, but it also facilitated arterial access via the elevation of the left common carotid artery and also helps to avoid back wall injury during arterial access. After adequate hemostasis was reached, the left neck wound was closed in a standard fashion and the venous sheet was removed. The patient tolerated the procedure well and moved all four extremities to command.